Dear colleagues, thank you for having me here today. I will sp speak about Synthesis Plus in the EDOF world. As a brief, I will uh, show uh, the difference between uh, the technology which we call add-offs. These are diffractive add-offs, uh, Symphony, Lara, Triumph. There are refractive add-offs without any spherical modification, and the single one is Oculantis Comfort um, MF15. And these are which are more interesting lenses, which are refractive add-offs with spherical modifications, uh, namely Synthesis Plus, EDOF, Lucidis, Miniwell. And there is another breed, which is Monofocal Plus, which is Isopure and Ihance. Frankly, they are more or less monofocal lenses with some intermediate capabilities. There are also combo EDOFs, which are Info, Eden, Harmonies, M plus X, and VVT from Alcon. What is the meaning of combo? They combine spherical modifications plus diffractive elements inside. Another <coughs> uh, EDOF technology, which is ancient but really robust, is the pinhole uh, effect. Uh, and there are two representatives, which are IC8 and extra focus from Mortar. And I want to stress a little bit on this slide, zone of modification. Uh, you have a central zone of mo modification. You have a combo zones of modification and paracentral ones. Why that is important? Because it is directly related to the visual axis and the ability to tolerate angle kappa or decentration in the pupil area. As you see, all the lenses with the central elements which increase the depth of focus are mainly dependent of from a good centration and angle kappa less than 0.5. Combo lenses, they are different story because they employ central and paracentral elements and the paracentral lenses as Synthesis Plus, uh, they, they seem to tolerate much of uh, visual axis decentrations and are less dependent from the large angle kappa. So this is a small project of mine, which I used a cinema camera through microscope to depict, uh, if I can, the optical elements in the lenses. This is a Synthesis Plus. You can see the large central refractive area, which is unaffected from any uh, spherical or other transitional elements which is extremely important because this is the main dioptric power of the lens. Uh, the lens comes preloaded in 1.6 capable of implantation injector, which is Medicel, and you can implant it however you want. Wound assisted in the back, the implantation is really controllable. And as you see, I use here hydro implantation for that. Uh, how the effect of extended of depth of focus is achieved? As I, as I already said, in the central area is the main refractive diopter power of the lens. But there are parafocal rays. And exactly with the modified, modified paracentral area, one can achieve uh, extended, extending of depth of focus. This is a small example which I took from telescopes to illustrate how in, with paracentral modifying, you can achieve extending the depth of focus. A little bit deeper, we will see the theory of the sixth order wave aberration, which is physical term, but in short, uh, if you want to uh, combat a spherical aberration, you have a few strategies. You can destroy it, you can remove it, you can balance it with different order of spherical aberrations. And from the world of photography and telescopes, 
we see that balancing the sixth and fourth uh, order of spherical aberrations can achieve around minus 1.5 diopters extending depth of focus without sacrificing a contrast or uh, inducing additional unwanted light phenomena. So, as we call, it doesn't induce toxic spherical aberration. And actually, I don't like to believe to the industry or sales representatives uh, when they speak about their products, I need to check if that is true. And I dig a little bit and the best way or place to search for the real technology be behind the product is the patent. This is a picture from the patent of a synthesis EDOF, which represents the areas of modification, which are different curvatures. They are purely refractive, so there are no diffractive elements in this lens. In my practice, where I think the Synthesis Plus is most suitable, it's suitable for every emetrope with less than one diopter of astigmatism, because we know that every technology which provides extended depth of focus can be influenced by large amounts of astigmatism. It is especially suitable for hyperops because it's not affected by angle kappa above 0.5. Why? Because the central zone is untouched, it's unmodified. And in myopic patients, we target them to minus one and a half and we can allow to have such uh, office progressive strategy because there are no ghosting images. So the patients are happy with their near and intermediate vision and they need a glasses like minus one and a half for far, which is perfectly fine for a patient which came from minus six. In different pathologies, I think that the Synthesis Plus EDOF technology is especially suitable in post-refractive corneas, mainly post-myopic LASIK. Why? Because we know that no matter how we calculate the lens, we normally achieve accuracy about diopter and a half. We know that uh, we can have a landing zone in this window, the opter and a half, with lens with EDOF effect. So I think it could be beneficial in such conditions. It, I use it in combined vitro retinal procedures and actually sometimes it enhances the peripheral view of my wide field viewing system. There is no contraindication to use this lens in uh, diabetic macular edema because <clears throat> the imaging plane is actually more than a single line as, the, as with my uh, monofocal lens. In dry AR, ARMD, there is no difference between the monofocal and EDOF lens. And in glaucoma eyes, I would not implant that in close uh, angle glaucoma eye because normally these eyes are on pilocarpine and they have a small pupils. This is an example of uh, Vivity and Synthesis Plus as a lenses with paracentral modifications and Miniwell and Lucidis as a lenses with central modifications. Why that is important? As I already said, the optical centration. These are two eyes on the same patient implanted with Lucidis. You see that the central button in the right eye is fairly centered center uh, by the pupil and in the left eye it is decentered. Decentration of the central element means that this lens is mainly <laughs> dependent from uh, the visual axis and should not be implanted in eyes with large angle kappa. Uh, this is the patent from uh, Vivity which is diffractive element plus wavefront shaping lens uh, this is a central island lens, which is the uh, Wuchidis. So, as I said, the central modification uh, is not the best one. And this is a short movie, which will show the same pictures of diffractive lenses. 
which show how the design of the Fresnel optic, which is fairly basic, shows what happens in the real world when this lens is, uh, is touched by the light. You have internal reflections, starburst, you have aperture rings, uh, all that things that you don't have in the refractive EDOF lenses. These are different uh, <clears throat> examples of the uh, bifocal and trifocal technology. So uh, you see the, the reflections and the unwanted light phenomena that can occur in such eyes, implanted with such lenses. Uh, you see the surface reflections, which is something that when in the night you have a driving lights in front of you, you will experience. You see the chromatic aberrations on the edges in the reflections. Again, chromatic reflections. This is a pure blast. And this is a uh, oculentis comfort. You see that the unwanted light phenomena are really less than with the diffractive technology. So this is a Wutsidis lens. Still, you can see that on the border of the transition, you can see a ring, and this is the Synthesis Plus, the least unwanted light phenomenon lenses in my small photographic study. So I leave you with the question, which implant would you choose for your eyes? Thank you for your attention.